Great. Well, welcome. We're really happy to be here. Thanks for uh, letting us come up on stage. Uh, I'm an investor at General Catalyst, and uh, but I was not when I first met you. Um, yes. So what's the, how do we know each other? What's the story <laughs> there? I think back in 2016, I very distinctly remember you coming to our Palo Alto office, and uh, I think within one meeting, you very deeply understood and cared about the problem that we were solving. And by the end of the meeting, we knew that we had to work with you anyhow, somehow. And uh, that's how we got started. Uh, you joined us as an advisor of the company long before you were part of GC. And uh, of course, a year after, as uh, General Catalyst invested in us in Series A, you became part of the board. Yeah. So it's been a great journey. So why don't we just take a minute, talk a little bit about what you're building and sure. how that's going. Yeah. So Minayo is the fastest and the most popular object storage out there. Um, for those who don't know, object storage is the technology that powers the cloud. So all the cloud services, they consume underlying cloud storage or object storage as the, uh, as the primary data store, such as you know, analytics applications or AI ML applications or traditional backup applications. So it has become the primary storage for all the cloud services. So that's what we do. And uh, we started back in 20. 15-ish, and uh, from zero lines of code to now, we are a billion Docker downloads and a million Docker downloads a day. So it has been quite a wild ride till now, and uh, it is amazing to see the traction that Minayo has gotten so far, especially because we come from the infrastructure space, and it's not considered to be very sexy mm -hmm. to hack on. So I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed how the developers have completely taken, uh, you know, given us a lot of love uh, uh, when it comes to the object storage. Yeah. So a million downloads a day. Yes. That's, that's, a, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been great to see the progress and, and be part of the journey. This talk is about focus. And sure. um, one of the things that's been very impressive as, as being part of, of what you guys have been building has been, has been watching and following that focus. You and your co-founder, AB, started at the beginning talking about liberating data. Yes. And as AB says, like, they're called data centers. Why is it mostly about compute, not about data? So how do we put the data back in the data right. center? So can you just talk a little bit about how that focus has helped you start the company and then right. kept you kind of guided in the last you know, many years now? Sure. So when we, you know, as uh, when we were starting uh, or when we were thinking about doing a startup, we were very clear that we wanted to pick an idea that is bigger and the problem statement that only, not only gets bigger, but also compounds over a period of, you know, 10, 15 years and we can hack on it for that long time. And no matter what we did, data was a problem that we thought is going to be relevant and data is a problem. Look around you, all the devices producing data all the time and uh, we knew that is a problem that is going to be relevant and that is going to grow over uh, next 10, 15 years. So that's how Minayo was born. Right around that time, AWS had convinced the world that uh, S3 storage, object storage is the right platform to build, to put all your blobs of data structured, semi-structured data at scale. And so we just wanted to be AWS S3 for the rest of the world. It was as simple as that. And that is the uh, foundation of how Minayo was started. And from then till now, we have been very, very clear with that vision. We were just going with our uh, seed uh, round deck that we built actually in the GC lobby, uh, mm -hmm. you know, back in back in the day. And uh, uh, you know, the first floor sl slides that we built, they were actually, you know same as we built for the Series B deck that we were building. It's all about having a land grab, building the world's number one cloud storage or object storage technology. And uh, so that we have been very focused in our approach so far. And when it comes to data liberation, we knew that as the companies or as the businesses become data businesses, you know, you don't want to be held hostage by any one particular cloud. That was very clear because if data is your business, you cannot cannot hold cannot your data cannot be held hostage at any point of time and uh, for with that 
problem statement we, when it comes to data liberation specifically, we had two tenants. One is the open source tenant, and second is the open standards tenant. And uh, with open source, it's, it's a philosophy that we truly believe in. It's not a business model for us. It's uh, more about that with open source is the right way to build the things, build better products out there. And uh, uh, you know, right from day one, our product has been 100% open source, give more value back to the customers. And uh, if we wanted, we, we could have done better job with uh, having simpler APIs, but we wanted to stick to the industry standards when it comes to APIs so that the customers can standardize on one single API, no matter where they go, whether it is on edge, whether it is private cloud, whether it is public cloud, and so on. So that's the reason why we stuck to S3 API, and uh, even AWS acknowledges the fact that Minayo has done a lot more to make S3 API a standard uh, than they could have ever done it uh, by themselves. So I think open source, open standards are the two most important tenants when it comes to uh, data liberation, and that has been the focus of Minayo from day one. Just be very single, with the singular focus, be AWS S3 for the rest of the world, as simple as that. So it's interesting because the, that focus ends up compounding and unintuitively maybe giving optionality and flexibility because you've had that focus. So. If you talk about being compatible with the APIs, it means you can run on any cloud, you can yes. run on private data centers. I mean, the reason you're getting a million downloads a day is, be is in part because the optionality you created around open source, where it's not just a matter of like subscribing to a service or whatever, but right. developers can choose yes. kind of kind of how they how they want to deploy it, which has kind of led to this breadth of uh, breadth of adoption. Um, that focus is also something you have reminded the board of from time yes. to time. So uh, <laughs> yes. I remember once or twice being on the, on the board and you know, either, either you, Gurma, or uh, AB would give the board a bit of a lecture <laughs> and we started pushing on different things like, yep. hey, this is going really well, but like, why not think about doing this or think about doing that? Yeah. And just like, how did you guys know that sticking to that focus was, was the right thing to do? Yeah, I think the focus comes from the problem statement that we are going after. It's a big enough problem. I think the market is big enough for us to be distracted for. And I think that is where really the focus comes from. And uh, you know, every single thing, every single iteration that we do in terms of building the product, it leads to a better product in terms of you know, how the software is consumed by the developers, in terms of user experience and so on. And I think it's the continuous iteration, continuous uh, uh, you know, rapid prototyping of the product overall that has uh, that eventually leads to a pro uh, to to an exceptional product. You were talking about focus has a compounding effect. So if you keep working on one problem every single day and keep making progress on that particular problem over a period of year two years, you will see a multiplier effect on that in terms of the velocity of the impact that you can create. So I think that has been uh, uh, you know the tenets of what we do, and it's also the DNA of myself and AB that uh, if we have picked up a problem, we are going to stick to it. And we are still, if you see, you know, we are still baby steps. We have a bigger adoption and bigger uh, ecosystem than AWS when it comes to the cloud storage adoption. But if you see from the commercial standpoint, they are $10 billion uh, run rate just for the storage services alone in one year. And, you know, we are just still in our diapers right now. So I think that gives us a lot of focus that there is still a lot more work to be done for us to claim as the number one uh, uh, storage provider out there when it comes to uh, cloud storage. So that gives us a lot of focus. And uh, with focus, um, you know, you were talking about uh, uh, having an impact on the developers. I think focus also helps us when we are only hacking on one thing, one thing at a time. It gives us the ability to be best of the breed in that uh, space. If you see, there are other bigger companies that we are challenging. They are doing 1,000 things, right? And if we cannot claim that by doing one thing, we can be better than them, then we have no business being here. So I think that is what focus gives you to do you know, one thing, one thing just better than the rest of the breed, and there is no way that you will not succeed if you follow that uh, path and journey. Yeah, I mean, you, you talked about focus compounding, so you gave the analogy a little bit of like, a little bit of thrust, a little bit of boost, yes. continuously over time, like builds kind of momentum and speed. Yes. It may be true like around the engineering work, it may be true around the developer community, um, but what are the kind of the other ways it compounds, whether it's brand or 
um, sure. uh, a quality or anything else? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, when you do things with focus, it also helps you uh, build simplicity in the product. You know, our goal has always been to make the product as simple as it can be. I, I, I think you know this, but Minayo comes from the word minimalism, so not many people uh, know about that. But our philosophy, our DNA has been to do do things in the most minimalist way. And by, minimal, by minimalism, what it means is that if you take one part away of the product, it looks incomplete. And if you add one additional feature to it, it looks you know, it looks opulent. So that is, you know, when you have that kind of product, it, it needs to look perfect from every single angle. And when you have focus, it enables you to do that, you know. It enables you to build enough simplicity in the product. And that's the reason why we have so many downloads out there, why the developers have just stuck to Minayo when they're building applications, because of the simplicity and ease to get things started and get, and you know, get their job done. I don't think so anyone wants to deal with the storage platform anymore or learn about storage. They just want to download it, deploy it, and get their job done, I think. And that's the way it should be. I mean, nobody's expecting you to be ex storage experts, how it was in you know past days. If you see EMCs and NetApps of the world, they made clunky appliances for an old school world. And they don't have a place in the new world anymore just because of the developer's need for ease and simplicity. And I think those are the very important tenants that come out from the focus. The, the focus, you've done a great job, not just in terms of the, the product. And as you say, like you have built something that is very turnkey, very deployable. Yeah. And you know, a little bit like Google, or I was at Dropbox for a number of years, where yes. um, Dropbox also has this characteristic of hiding a tremendous amount of implementation complexity behind a simple interface, yeah. right? It's like, it looks very simple on the surface, yes. but there's a lot of, of paddling underneath the, the surface. I think, I think what you've built is no exception to, yes. to that. Um, but it's also been true, I think, for how you guys have run the company. And you know, when we walk into the board meetings, we're not faced with a dashboard of 80 priority one things and KPIs. Yeah. You guys tend to be very, um, uh, very focused. And, and so just talk a little bit about that and how you've kind of created a culture a little bit around, yeah. you know, extending that focus into how you run the team. Yeah. You know, talking of board meetings, our goal is to just reduce it to one slide and just show the revenue number and be done with it in 10 minutes and go out for drinks, I think. That will be a really good board meeting to have. So <laughs> let's get to that stage sooner than later. <laughs> but uh, uh, yes, in terms of building the culture, I think, uh, you know, as founders, we are the captain of the ship. If we don't know where the ship is headed, it's just going to drift in all sorts of direction. And uh, when you're building an engineering first company, it is very, very important that you are over communicating with the team. You are always telling them and bringing them back, pulling them back why you're doing things the way you're doing, where, where you're headed as a company. So everyone is aligned. And uh, uh, the thing is that when you have very creative people in the team, it is. Uh, it becomes a little bit of a balance because you do need to give them a space to do their creative things and be excited about the job that they signed up on. So you need to give them that much flexibility, but also bring them back that you know this is the direction that we are going and whatever you do in the realm of uh, uh, you know whatever you need to do from uh, engineering standpoint, it needs to get aligned to that one singular direction, and that's how we make progress uh, together as a company. I think when we started, you know, it was just three of us, me, AB, and Harsha for the longest time. And it was just so easy. Things were just like so beautiful, easy, because we were talking all the time. It was, you know, we hired the next set of three people. Again, it was very easy because we were just sitting in one room, talking, communicating, and making sure that, you know, there's almost like a mind melt happening. Mm -hmm. You know, when you reach, I think, somewhere around 50 people, it doesn't happen that much. And uh, you also tend to be like one step away from uh, the hires that you have uh, brought in uh, to the team. So I think it just becomes all the more important that uh, in whatever all hands you're having, uh, we do have like all hands every single day. So that helps in terms of making sure that the entire company is just aligned and making sure we are, become, we are making progress in the right direction. So just a little bit of things here and there, but I think the problem becomes 
becomes important as you scale the company and making sure that at that scale everyone is aligned towards one mission and and that's our job as founder it is exhausting to just keep on communicating <laughs> the same thing over and over to the team because to you it might look repetitive but there is a lot of value in that uh, to the new team members especially yeah it takes a yeah. long time actually for new ideas to really sink in across an organization yeah. uh, and then for people that are coming on you know they're hiring to get onboarded, onboarding doesn't end, you know, when their laptop is provisioned yes. and they're in the right depots. No. It, it really ends when they are kind of really deep enough into the culture and understanding what the what their priorities yeah. and focus really are. Yeah. So one of the things that um, challenges focus a little bit, people will say, is like focus. If like singular focus can end up being myopic, you can miss things that are going on in the world and trends, et cetera. Yeah. And part of the magic I think you guys have achieved is this balance between yeah. leadership and management, where yeah. leadership's like trying to push innovation, drive change, yeah. seize opportunity, and management's about kind of keeping things going, getting things done, et cetera. So how, how do you think about that tension and yeah. how does Focus help you kind of navigate that? Yeah, I think uh, uh, what is important that is that we always have our eye on the bigger picture. And uh, when you do that rest, everything becomes a noise after that point, right? And there will always be things in terms of, you know, the smaller trends that keep on coming and going. We need to be tactical on how we get to our end result or uh, the goals that we have set out as a company for in the longer term. And that's, I think that really helps putting a North Star in front of us. And no matter what we do, we need to make, make progress towards that one particular goal. So I think that keeps us very, uh, the team very aligned. And in terms of management style, I think uh, we have a very flat organization structure and uh, we want to scale that, it, that way. We don't have uh, SVP and VPs and layers and layers of people as traditionally, uh, you know, the organizations are built. And the reason is that uh, we want people to step up and become leaders. We don't hire rock stars from other company. We expect there'll be rock stars within Minayo that will go on to become greater things. So that's the goal for us. And as a founders, that's also our responsibility to enable them, to mentor them in whatever way, to give them the opportunity to get to that level. Of course, there are people who don't want to take that responsibility. They just want to sit on one side and just hack all day. That's completely fine. That's completely fair. But then there are people who want to take more responsibility. And we do need to make sure that as we see those emerging leaders, we groom them in a way that they not only become like an extension of us, how we would react in situations, they would react in a similar way eventually. That becomes a responsibility of ours to make sure that that gets translated to them. And also, once you do that, you know, as they grow up and as they build their teams, they will start start mentoring their team in the similar way how we mentored them. So, you know, it's leaders all the way down rather than having a traditional management structure or a team. And I think that has worked great for us. And that is, I think, uh, that's the only way that we will scale the company as well. Just have more leaders in the organization, give them power, empower them, let them do creative things, make sure they're very aligned with the vision of the company, very aligned with how we think about problem solving and uh, we make progress together. More leadership, less hierarchy. That's the way to go. <laughs> cool. So talk a little bit about the threats to focus now. Um, we're at Series B now and scaling. Yes, yes. Um, like you said, the, the uh, kind of the scale of the deployment of the company now, I mean, Minio's become a de facto standard for yes. developers everywhere, you know, yep. being an object store, even to the point where my alma mater, Microsoft, recently announced that the, the database will be able to run Yes. Know, over our object store, which was a, um, a a great thing for me to see personally, <laughs> right? Those worlds come together. And it's kind of a, at a really great time in the world because as data doubles every year, yes. um, the cost of data management in every enterprise has gotten to the, it's bubbling very close to the top, dangerously to the top of, uh, of operational costs for IT. And we can't have an, a thousand X cost, you know, um, take effect. So here we are kind of building foundational technology that gives some flexibility and it creates a multi-cloud fabric. So it's sort of just in time, but we still have to get it right. Yes. So what are the threats to focus now and how do you think about that in the coming next few years? I think we are heads down focused, uh, focused on building best of breed object storage and making sure whatever the workloads are, they work natively on top of Minayo. You mentioned Microsoft. Uh, 
this week they announced uh, SQL Server coming natively, and we were one of their first design partners to build it. So if you see any new database or application that works with S3, 98% of the times it will be built on Minio. So that's our land grab and that's our reach uh, uh, when it comes to developers. And even the older applications, like you know traditional applications like backup applications like Veeam or Commvault, as they start testing and making themselves more cloud native by coming to S3, they start testing it on Minio just because it's very easy, simple to deploy. Down, go to our website, download the product, and within five ten minutes you can have your own cloud storage. So it's, I think, the ease and simplicity. So our we are heads down focused on making sure whatever we can do to uh, enable that experience, make that experience better. That is where uh, we are focused the, as, the, as a company. And uh, data is going to get produced everywhere. Uh, you know, at the edge, within private clouds, within public clouds, and it is very important for organizations to have that freedom from the cloud lock-in. And what gives you the freedom is having standard set of APIs. I think that is super important if you are, and most of the businesses are going to become hyperscaler uh, themselves in next five years. So it becomes even more important from the cost perspective that you have complete control of your data and have, because data has gravity, applications you can move around, you can spin around, you can just, you know, containerize it and deploy it wherever it needs to be, but data has gravity, and storage you cannot move around. So it's important that you remove the silos, bring all the storage together in S3 uh, compatible storage platform like Minio, and just run application stateless on top of it, no matter where it needs to be. And you can optimize your cost, whether it needs to run on a high performance hardware, whether it needs to run on a low performance hardware, you can have mix of topologies there, but uh, yes, I completely agree with you as you know the cost the organizations are becoming data organizations the cost is going to become a very important factor in determining who they partner with and who gives them the freedom the freedom in the true sense so i think uh, that is where minio will play a very important role so, so quickly um because we're going to be coming up on time here in a minute um you and ab have done an amazing job about staying focused on kind of the right stakeholder? Because there's some companies that sort of tend to drift into focusing on competitors, or what the industry is saying, or customers, et cetera. How do you think about what you should be focused on as a company? So I think from day one, our competitor, if you might want to call it, has been AWS S3. So we have been telling the world either data sits on Minio or data sits on AWS. When we started, it looked ridiculous because nobody would believe us when we would make those statements. Now it is, of course, a lot more believable when we tell either, you know, you data sits on them or data sits on us. So I think as we start getting more and more uh, into the weeds within the organizations, you know, right now 10,000 organizations use Minio in some shape or format, 70% in Fortune 500 use Minio. So I think as we go more deeper into the weeds and become more and more established as a standard within uh, enterprises themselves, I think uh, that will help us solidify our position when it comes to, uh, you know, just AWS. We don't consider legacy players like Dell's EMCs of the world as competition anymore. They don't have a role. I'm sorry if I'm offending <laughs> anyone. They are our investors as well, but uh, yeah. Sure. yeah. So we only have a minute left. If, if, if we take this topic of staying focused early stage as founder, like what's the takeaway? What's the kind of simplest way you can I think the simplest way is if you are starting uh, starting off, uh, you need to pick a bigger problem. When you pick a bigger problem, it's very easy to hack on it for next like 10 to 15 years. And also it is very easy to align. It is easy to align, get, you know, a, have a team that is aligned towards your vision, even align the investors towards your vision because who doesn't want to work on bigger problems, right? So I think, if you identify a problem that is going to uh, compound and grow in next 10 years, go latch onto it, and I think you'll be just fine. Awesome. Thank you, Karima. Great to yeah. see you. Very Thank you. It's so wonderful to be you. here with you. Thank you.